Hello and welcome back to another episode of Boys Gone Wild. Andrew is wearing tracksuit bottoms today. Um, you normally wear trousers. Mm. But you chose to wear sometimes shorts. Bottoms. Yes, but that's weather dependent. Mm. And we had we used to wear tracksuits quite a lot in the midst of lockdown because mm. we just didn't care, and it felt it yeah. felt like fuck you guys. We've been locked up here. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But then you've been wearing trousers and I've been wearing trousers as well just to, to show appearances. But today you decided against it. What's going on? What's, uh, what, what's, what's what, going on there, champ? Everything's in the wash or packed. You're uh, going away. Going ab abroad mm. to the United States of America. But more on that later. You'll have to flick through to find that one out. Sure. Um, because I have a gripe. You have a gripe? Yeah. Brilliant. It's, it's not Let's a get the gripes out I haven't done a gripe in a while. It's not a gripe I'm particularly um, proud of. Sure. And I am aware that most of my gripes take place just in front of our front door. Yeah, it, yeah. A lot of the stories and anecdotes do happen within a like a two meter square two radius. meter radius <laughs> yeah. from my bedroom. Yeah. But um, now, I'd, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. Good. Um, my gripe yeah. is when people working for charities come and knock on your door. And, sh and try and get you to give to charity. Now, the reason it's a gripe, I don't mind. You can like on the street, fine, because there's you have, you can basically you can say yes or no if you want to be engaged by it. When yeah. they're at your door, I'm you're never gonna like slam the door on them, obviously, because we're civil members of society. But you don't really have a choice, and you have to humour them, and you have to. So you end up staying at the door for a bit, and even if it happened just now, and what I was, was like, the oh, I didn't even hear. Okay. I I had my AirPods in, and mm. I was like, "I'm I'm really sorry, I'm working." It was like, "Oh yeah, I, I can, I'm clearly in a, I'm clearly in a power in a lunch. Meeting. I'm yeah. clearly it's clearly yeah. power lunch time." But then it was like, oh, "I'm I'm sorry, mate. I'm working." He's eating out of Tupperware. He's got his AirPods in. I can't talk, and then he just kept he just kind of kept talking. I was like, "Well, now I just have to stand and watch and listen for a bit." And it was like, "I'm clearly not. Nothing's going to happen here." And I do, I don't like when they knock on your doors because well, you did don't you have get a choice. Surly? I didn't get surly. No. Because I feel you, 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 you're questions. heading towards getting surly because you got surly with the homeless guy. You, I got surly. You he getting, got surly you with get, me. Are you getting surlier no. in general with people? No. There's no surly. I got surly with the homeless guy because <laughs> <laughs> we haven't told that story on air. Yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can we not? No. We were going to do it on the Patreon. Um, no, I got surly with a homeless man because I was walking... And I was late for something and I was clearly in a rush and he yeah. was waiting at the top <laughs> and he was waiting at the top of the road and he was looking at people and like not going up to people. He was selecting the right person. He yeah. saw old Muggins walking along and he was like, he's not going to be surly with me. Yeah. Well, he's not going to be. And I went and I just went, oh, I'm really sorry, mate. Yeah. I don't have any, any change. I'm in a really big rush. Yeah. And he went, oh, you can't, you can't say that to people. You have to have like the time of day for this stuff. And I was like, okay, fine. Here we go. And then stopped and then like listened to his story. I was like, I'm really sorry, mate. What was the story? He's homeless. Yeah. Because I, I, that is one thing. That is that is something that's like, obviously you've got to be very understanding of homeless people. Yeah. But which it, I, does, it, does, it does feel like when you say you got no change and then they take offense and they yeah. give you a long story only to ask for change. I do feel... Yeah, but this is fair because you can't... I do can't, feel the union of homeless I, people should have a word. A, a, a quiet talking to of him. <laughs> so, well, it's just that, it, 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 that is just annoying. It is, and it's like, it's because I put... I, What's the game plan? The, the thing is I put the time in with other homeless people. It's just every now and again, yeah. people are in a rush and they yeah. do actually have to get somewhere and they don't have any change. So in fairness to him, he doesn't. And it's a tough life. So I'm never yeah. actually that. The thing is he does shoot up in front of our house. Yes. Which is like, I'm not saying you shouldn't give to someone who shoots up no, in front of your house. No, because that's what you said. That's what you said is that he seemed to take... He, he seemed to take a moral high ground against you and you didn't yeah. like that. No, I didn't like that. Because I was like, cause I was like <laughs> no, usually I do stop and listen and then give any change if I do. But I don't right now. And I'm in a rush. So I was really just like, okay, go on then. Yeah. I was like... I, I don't have any change. Yeah, and but you didn't off. like that he shot up crack after being. I didn't. <laughs> after getting taking the moral high ground. No, I did. I did. I didn't like that at all. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. Well, it, was, it, it did. It rubbed me the wrong way. It, it really rubbed me the wrong way because I was like, because and I was in a rush, so I was f flustered anyway. Yeah. I just thought it was like I get it. I get it. I get it's tough, and I get that it's not like one. When one per when I walk past and I s make an assumption that he wants ch change, is that the problem? No, yeah, it's not the it's no, not the problem because yeah. I'm cutting to the chase. No, no, but if he doesn't want change, then that is a problem. But it's when they ask for change at the end is the problem. Well, no, because we both knew what was happening. Yeah, 
It was obviously, and he, I think he got a bit through it. And I went, sorry, mate, I don't have any changes. He's like, no, you, you have to let people finish. And I was like, do I have to let everyone finish that I meet on the street? Because I don't think I do. And like most of the time I would, yeah, but yeah. just not in this context. Did you destroy him with truth and logic? <laughs> Obviously flustered. Andrew destroys homeless man with, with truth and logic. <laughs> God, that's not a good video to go viral, is it? <laughs> no, it wasn't. That, that flustered me. Um, Friday night. Outside Liverpool Street Station, I was with a friend of the pod, Paddy Young, and while we were, we were just waiting because we were going separate ways, and you know we haven't finished the conversation, so you just linger around a train station, yeah. um, and then a homeless guy comes up to me, and I'm ready to say, sorry, mate, um, i got bags of cash, not going to give it to you, like yeah, I normally like do. Like you usually do. It's <laughs> very horrible to watch. <laughs> Awful. Yeah. Um, and then he goes, by the way, mate, uh, this entrance to Liverpool Street is closed, if you just want to take around there, right. you're way in. Yeah. And you're waiting for him to say, can you get to change? Yeah. And he, That's all. Thanks very much. Have a nice night. Yeah. And then I went to Paddy. Maybe oddly naive from me. Yeah. In this instance, I went, that's great. I really thought he was going to ask for some money. Right. Like, that's uh, that's shame a, on you. Yeah. Thing, it's, it's a, yeah. I was like, boo, boo I was me. more like, you know, good thing. That's a nice, yeah. that's a surprise. And I didn't, I really expected that. And Paddy's like, no, he's going to come. He's definitely going to come round. Yeah. And then he, I saw him doing it to everyone else. Yeah. And then he does another lap. Yeah. And, and then he says, ah, oh, if, if you wouldn't mind, because now he's laid that yeah, foundation. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't have any change. Yeah. <clears throat> then a geezer, this is a strange one. A geezer walks past. And I, you know, it, it, there's, there's really like an act that can make me crack. Um, like something that really gets me to yeah. give money. A guy walks past, he's got a gaping wound mm. deep, deep in his arm, yeah. blood everywhere. Like it looks like, some, looks like someone's got a spoon yeah. and spooned out the flesh of his arm. It's That's like right. a, yeah. a ditch covered in blood. I feel we're getting away from my gripe, but continue. Um, <laughs> And uh, then he said, look, this is, I just got in a bad fight. I need to get to hospital. And I, I just panicked. I, was like, I gave him like three quid. Um, and he said, thanks very much. And then he kind of wandered over to the other, another group. And I just don't know. Is that an act? I don't know. You it's, just can't know. You, it's hard because I've seen, I've had a guy like that come up to me. And then it, but it I didn't worked. have any change. It worked for me. Yeah. Well, I, the thing is, it doesn't, I always, I know I always have, if I have change, I will always give it, but I just never, ever, ever yeah. have any change anymore. Like, I don't think that's a problem because you can't, there's nothing to give unless mm. you go to a cash point and suddenly you're actually losing some, some real hard yeah. cash. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. But it, might, it might be. You're great with the, the charity person. Yeah. I've just, this is, this is quite an aggressive start to the podcast, isn't it? Against charities and homeless people. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> Imagine a charity for homeless people. God, <laughs> God, that's our worst nightmare. If it knocks on our door. <laughs> because in the street, you yeah. can, you, there's, it's a public space. And you can, you know, you can navigate. Maybe you are up for, maybe you can't do have time to stop for a conversation and then maybe potentially, you know, give to a charity in yeah. the future. But when you you have the option there. And I don't like this. There's a kind of, I think in fairness, because you also have to put yourself in their shoes and they're going around knocking on so many doors, getting no's most of the time. So they're trying to do these sales tactics. But they are, it's, it's almost like a standoff. Because it's immediately like, I'm busy. I, and that's what I don't like about it. Because even when you say, I'm really sorry, I'm working at the moment. I can't really talk. They keep talking. Yeah. They don't really, because their th whole thing is like, yeah. don't, they're in their sales training. It would be, don't, don't shut the door. Or don't leave if they say they're busy. Stay there. But yeah. then it's like, no, I am actually busy. I don't want to shut the door on you. But I'm going to kind yeah. of have to, because yeah. I need to be over here. Yeah. But I, I don't like it. I find it abrasive. And yeah. it's also a terrifying, because, you know, I, you could be, you're just you're at home. You're not ready for a conversation about no. The you're, not, you're not socially. People. You're, you're not, not socially, socially ready for any yeah. kind of conversation with a stranger. Did I hear? Did you say leave us alone at any point in that exchange? No, no. I because the only reason I asked is because I remember hearing the door shut and someone say leave us alone or the phrase leave us alone and I thought is Andrew does Andrew have some sort of altercation with no, someone no. at the door I didn't say and then I didn't think I didn't think anything of it yeah. until you just said this no I didn't did tell him to leave did you tell Adam alone. no did you complain to anyone I might have complained to myself was that to yourself maybe did there's you someone say downstairs <laughs> <laughs> it could have been to myself <laughs> He was kind of strange because so you said to yourself, "Leave yeah. us alone." <laughs> Maybe, yeah, because it's just it happens so much, and I'm always a dickhead yeah. answering the door. Yeah, yeah. So very few of you ever have to like, and it's always me, and I'm always there, like I'm working, please. And I'm like, and I always feel bad because I part of it is like, 
I'm like, can you go and knock on some richer people's stores? I yeah. know that's this is quite a nice street, but you should avoid this house. Yeah, obviously. Do you think the people who live in this house have money to give? Exactly. But then I always feel bad because I'm like, obviously I could give something, but I I, I just can't really. You do, you know? Know, do you think the people, well, I can, do you see the people outside Myland Station all the time? Yeah, the, the knife young crime. people. The knife uh, crime. Yeah. I they're a bit too aggressive for me as well. Yeah, well, it's when they do. They get it's in the, the way. Head, it's the head. The get in the way, and it's when I've got headphones in. Yeah, yeah. And they do the. Take the headphones off. Yeah, I know you've got to, you have to like, I'm just saying, no, I'm sorry. Never. I just. I, sp- I get it because it's like how, it's a, they're, they're doing a good cause, sure. What are they, we're just raising awareness or getting some cash I think together. it's a charity, yeah. Mm. Um, all of these people are doing a good cause and it's, it's fair. It's not, but it's like, it's a very unique sales tactic. It's like cold calling, isn't it? Yeah. Really, but. And especially at a train station. I get it's a populated place, they, but they, when you're about to go in a train, yeah. you're, you're like ready to start a journey. The last thing you want to do is delay it with a 10 minute conversation about knife crime. Exactly. And then strange. when you've just got home or you, you just want to get home rather than that, but then where else would you go? Do you know what mm. I mean? Um, but would you ban it? Ban what? Knocking charities? On, not, yeah, charities. Do you think they have some merits? I'd, I'm, I, I wouldn't be against banning it. Right, yeah. We'll have a discussion. But I just feel, I feel there's more modern ways to get to people. I'd say the one thing that's the benefit of the, the charities knocking on the door is I'm sure old people... Yeah, who, who appre- should give to... Uh, uh, well, just to really appreciate... Some people might appreciate the company. Right. And if you keep taking away so reasons for people to knock on the door... So you think there's some so- old people who are just waiting on the knock on the door from the homeless person charity to... Well, you know, Linda, whose wife passed, uh, husband, wife, why not? Whose wife passed away five years ago. Right. Uh, there's The knocks are getting less and less every year that goes by. Right, because of technology. Yeah. And I think if we internet to eyes, mm. automate every job, right. soon there'll be no knocks on the door. Yeah, not She's better. not benefiting from the internet. Right. It's a very specific argument. She- <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. And maybe that's a charity I'd knock from door to door for. Yeah. For, I'd have like this on my pamphlet. I'd say, this is Linda. Mm. She doesn't benefit from the internet. Right. She benefits from door to door charity sales. So are you a charity for door to door charities? I am. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so I'm you're here. raising money for door to door charities. <laughs> yeah. To right. fund them. Yeah. 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 But it, it, vaguely. Like, vaguely, because it's kind of for Linda. But yeah, it's, but I mean, it doesn't matter. No, I mean, vaguely in the sense, it doesn't matter which charity it is. It's just anyone. Yeah, any door to door charity. I'll just, just pump some money. Fund in. Carpet, you know. Yeah, yeah, keep them going. So to help people like Linda. Yeah, right. And Linda is very, is not rare. She's exactly. she's all of us. So how are you feeling about going away tomorrow? Andrew, we're going to be away for uh, 10 days, is it? Yeah, I think so. Thursday to Sunday, whatever that is. You never seem... You never seem to know much about the the trips you're going on. You always feel well. Always... I knew it's, well. Thursday to Sunday is fair enough. I haven't totted up the days, but it, it sounds like ten days to me, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's ten days. Yeah, because days are kind of confusing when you think about it. <laughs> so I forgot about your your thing with time, time. thing. They are kind of confusing because when does one start and another end? Don't say that's the that's what they want you to think. <laughs> what, well, big, when time, time difference comes into it <laughs> and like all of that stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. like you leave, I'm leaving in the morning, but it's an 11 hour flight, and yeah. then you're there for a, a bit, so it's so you're, you can you're do it by night, yeah. And we might do an episode with you in LA, yeah, we in need LA to talk special. about that. yeah. Um, uh, how are you feeling about going away? I'm, to- I'm very excited, yeah. Have you ever, you've, ever been, you've ever been to the West Coast? I have been to LA before. Have you? Yeah, when I was very young. How come? Holiday. Before we went to fucking Disney World. Is this pre or post divorce? Pre. Oh. Bill the, and Sal. And oh, the, the golden oh age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, proper family holiday. <laughs> Crikey, yeah. Horrible time. Well, no, yeah, well, I, went, I went to LA. That's where Ven- Venice Beach. Yes. When it was during my shark phase a bit. So I was kind of... I was bodyboarding with the kind of hope that there would be a sure, shark because sure, sure. there's loads of sharks there. Yeah, that was when I didn't quite. I I knew enough about sharks to love them, but not enough to adequately fear and respect them. Yeah, that's probably the most autistic trait you've had. I mean, it, it went away, but your love of sh- you have so few things like that, which are like kind of nerdy, sh- like yeah. autistic type things. Kind of. I mean, may, maybe niche sports, potentially. <laughs> yeah. But you, niche you don't have any of the interests of a normal <laughs> PG Woodhouse. Um, shots is the only time you really showed that side of you. you know? Yeah. Because you, 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 don't, you don't like be nerdy about other stuff. Well, hmm. 
I'm kind of getting more, well, now that I've watched more films, I'm more nerdy about films. Sure. But no, not ever. I don't ever like publicize it. No. I, do, I, I don't really, I, I very rarely have a thing. I think yeah. my shark phase is I learned from that. And it was like, that's pro. Oh, I was kind of weird about Mika. The singer. No, no, no. Are you oh, Martha. Yeah, yeah. We, we had to um, we had to decorate our um school rucksacks. Yeah. Um, and it was when Martha had just joined the school, and she sat next to me, I think. And then I decorated mine all with um Mika stuff. How old were you? Uh, year <laughs> six. Yeah. Um, so I had all the Mika stuff, and she was she recounts this to me quite regularly she's like who the fuck is this guy like that is just obsessed with Mika <laughs> those of you who don't know Mika's, Mika's the one that's like I want to be like know, Chris Kelly I'd say they all so know we got Mika. some younger listeners I don't know Mika, don't know. Mika is Icarus essentially he, he flew too close to the sun with Grace Kelly <laughs> Was that as close to the sun? The industry and the public weren't ready for it. <laughs> well, did you what? Did you, did you take I any interest brown, in his Euro? Did you take blue, any interest in his Eurovision fire, performance? Did you do Eurovision? Do you not know about this? No. Um, Eurovision was great last year. Uh, I mean, he hosted it. Was he in? He was in it. Was, oh, I did he see. He hosted this. and then did an extraordinary medley, which was amazing. Of all of, the different songs. Of well, his three songs. <laughs> oh, oh, of his songs. Yeah. I'm just really surprised no one sent me this. So it was incredible medley. Um, of Grace Kelly, uh, I can be. What's the? Is that Grace Kelly? I can be fine. Is that Grace Kelly? I can be perfect. I can be anything. I can be fine. Why didn't she like me? Why didn't she like me? And then one other big hit he had. Yeah. My, um, that that is some of the shark stuff is retained. The Mika stuff is well and truly gone. Gone, gone. Yeah. So he did other than some lyrics. Th he did those three songs, and then at the end he sneaked in a new an album song. Right. And it, it, it like well like his new single. He's trying to use your image to promote. Um, is he coming back? Well, judging on the so quality of the song, he's not coming back. Because he did three right. bangers, extraordinary, yeah. and then he ended with um, his, his new, new stuff, and it was absolutely dog Significantly shit. worse. It just was like, yeah. you could see how it was like he only... Lollipop. Lollipop, yeah. yeah. That was the big one, yeah. I think. Sucking too hard on your lollipop, oh, you know, gonna get you down. Something that's... Um, hey, uh, an interesting weird fact that's lodged in my head Mika yeah. has sold more records in Nigeria than the Beatles why now let's work it out Nigeria is quite a what is it the most corrupt country in the world wow yes no it is it is yeah yeah <laughs> right we're getting there we're slowly piecing it together so Mika sold more records than yeah. the Beatles in Nigeria. Nigeria yeah. is the most corrupt country in the world. Do you think Mika has a stake in the political apparatus of Nigeria? Yeah, I feel. Yeah, I feel it's what you can pirate your hands on. Probably right. would would drive up the sales numbers. I feel if your numbers, I feel like there'd be a lot of anon N Nigeria be a, would be home to a lot of anomalies, mm. seeing as the way it's laid out. Yes. So wait. So you think that there's there was wide enough appeal of the Beatles so that they would kind of pirate the DVDs, but they didn't bother pirating Mika, so that people had to buy Mika, and or Mika was just versa. the level of interest, or vice versa. And it's about time. How would that work? So Mika was, well, but that would make make Mika more popular than the Beatles. If I'm correct, this is Beatles were around in the sixties. I think that might have been the period when the Biafran War was going on, which right. is the civil war in Nigeria. You don't I want reckon, to listen to come together at that. Point. I reckon during. Well, maybe you the, do. Maybe <laughs> maybe that would have solved a lot of problems. <laughs> Let it be. <laughs> would have taken years off that conflict. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> if only if only and now though there's a lot of problems in Nigeria it's still you know in a relative period of you know at least not civil war I don't think it's, it's, I think it's becoming a bit prosperous we yes have, it's becoming, I think it's it's, yeah. it's one of, it's definitely one of the more developed African nations definitely it's one of the centres of Africa I don't think you can Africa. say developed anymore by the way what do you say what's the white you're not allowed to do MEDC and LEDC anymore well, then geography's out the window. Geography's gone, yeah. Didn't have any heard. <laughs> it's out the window. What are all our geography teachers going to do now? <laughs> no idea. No idea. What is it? You can't say, because it's like more or less developed implies this. Uh, a Which kind is, of, you know, fair enough. But, but no, then what's... what? Um, it implies a certain threshold of what's good and bad. Yeah. But then uh, what do you replace it with? Because it's still, it's still a worthwhile it's, thing to kind of work out. Yeah. I can't remember. There was a word. Because I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. It might new even week. just be developing rather than less developed. Because developed already is a politically correct 
a, a more politically correct word than I assumed Why, what word are you thinking before. of? Well, I don't know, whatever they used what before. What are you thinking of? I'm, I assume during colonial times they had some pretty ratchet words which weren't developing nations. They're saying nation. trash country, aren't they? <laughs> well, whatever they said. You're thinking trash country. They changed the developing nations because it was kinder. And now yes. we have to be even kinder. Yes. Wow, it's so bad to try and be kinder, So isn't what it? is it? Even kinder. Double kind. Um, I think it's developing. It might be the simple as developing rather than less developed. Yeah, because it, it you implies know, a, so fats turn to plus sized. Yeah. So what would be the developing nation would be like? Develop, so yeah, develop, developing um, on their way. Um, <laughs> doing good. <laughs> doing good. Um, making improvements every day. <laughs> Striving towards their goals. Yeah, I like that. But then I think that's probably it. The Biafran then War you go into is why, is why um, Mika... Um, Mika who came out during the nor- the 2000s right. but so um, I think that's a misleading statistic go on shoot right here we go <laughs> <clears throat> shoot fat corner um, because you say when you say Mika sold more records 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 than um, the Beatles it implies <laughs> that was a great record man it does imply are we still on yeah yeah, yeah. it does imply what, what is this point so this far? is really important <laughs> you need to make are sure it still... was rolling because this shit is everyone's still there this isn't gonna be a second take on no, this it's, it's a one <laughs> um you say that you say that um mika sold more records than the beatles mm. in nigeria sure um that kind of implies the, the success of mika right not uh, not just over the beatles for me, it was like, oh, why are Nigeria so obsessed with Mika? Because I'm thinking, like, even you could add in the Rolling Stones, the Who, all of these bands as well. So it isn't that Mika just sold so many records in Nigeria. It's just they just sold more than the Beatles because of a war. Maybe. Or, yeah, we don't know, do we? We don't know. Right. I just think it's an inter- it, it was one, it's 100% it was an interesting one fact. tidbit that I heard on the radio when in about 2009, yeah. maybe backseat of the car and I heard someone throw it out and that just lodged in my brain that's one of my yeah, core yeah. memories have you seen it Inside Out the film the one yeah you know with the like core memories yeah, 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 sadly yeah. that's one of mine it's an odd one it's not good well, it's handy <laughs> it's, it's a very useful it's not fact. a bad fact I'm trying to think I've definitely yeah. got some useful I got fact. weird shit that lodges in there Go I on, once then. saw um, this is really dull but it's I'll, know, I'll, I'll remember it to the rest of my life I was on the train and I saw um, someone with a one of those iPods, the thin iPod Nano Blues, yeah. uh, and I saw they had 187 songs. That's that's the memory. That's sad, isn't it? And that's I've got that. Yeah, that number. Those things can't go. That that's just there. Yeah, there's some core cool memories that are. <laughs> I have I have some, but I'm like they can only be accessed when they accidentally come up. I can't I can't yes. obtain yeah. them. Um, which I guess was what happened with I think earlier, be, my memory would be great with multiple choice. <laughs> it's not good if yeah. I, you know, multiple choice. I would crush a yeah. memory test. <laughs> I get, I'd yeah. crush it. Yeah, if you give me yeah. four oh, options. A memory test, yeah. I would crush it. But yeah. if you just gave me the blank thing, I couldn't oh. remember what my not, hold on, where I the... studied at uni. No, no, I know where I what studied. What in the at world uni. are you saying? <laughs> you've had you've had one beer. No. no. <laughs> Uh, which building I studied in? Milburn House? You yeah, wouldn't know. Yeah, it's that Milburn it? House, Okay, yeah. good. Well, that's yeah. it then. Well, um, speaking of core cool memories, sure. is that I think I've developed some really odd ones in later life because, and it's kind of frustrating. It's almost like unwanted thoughts because every time I'm in the shower washing my body, I it pops into my head every single time that I saw this diagram on Facebook. Is that an, it was a, a knock door? Carry on. Do you think? Let me check. If it's a charity, just because I've got something. Can you grab me a Modelo from the fridge? Yeah. He wasn't happy. No, didn't sit sound it. Oh, thank you. I can't be bothered to keep opening these doors. I'm actually going to go on door strike. Yeah. Because it's never for me. Yeah. yeah. It's never <laughs> fucking for me. Well, I got one for you today. Yeah. So it's not well, one. For you. Yeah, because I'm, I've had to do a flurry of deliveries. But anyway. For LA? Yeah. What are you getting for LA? Vape fluid. <laughs> that's exactly what it is <laughs> well I thought that might be my aftershave which hasn't arrived but uh, for LA it's not LA aftershave <laughs> is it Packer Raban 1 million no it's La Crosse Rouge La Crosse Rouge like L.12 not the new version it's actually becoming harder to find 
Because so I've, I've worn I, I, that aftershave. No, let me finish this point. We so with the core memories, I've I've got to a certain point, and I'm sure we've cut it in a way that makes sense. So every time I'm in the shower and I'm washing my body, always an image flashes up of this meme I saw on Facebook, which is a, a joke, a joke meme. If there's any other kind, but it was like of a a man's outstretched body, like yeah. a drawing, and then it was like a heat graph, and it was like. Um, with a key on the side R- red red was where you wash loads so like your armpits and your balls and then the rest was like and then the other color it was filled in with the rest of the color it was like the, i'm sure the water will get it so every time i'm now having a shower i think of that and was the point of the meme where how, men how, how care- men wash how careless we are kind of yeah, yeah. yeah and you don't enact any of it it's just a memory that's linked yeah and it's, it's just gone Another one is every time I'm spreading butter on Marmite on toast, I hear my ex-girlfriend say, boys are really bad at spreading things on toast. <laughs> every time. Every single time I spread something on toast, which is almost every day. Almost every day I think of that. Brutal. Because it's true. It's true. Boys are awful at spreading are, things they, they on are. toast. They We're are. dreadful at We're it. We're not built for it. Mm. You know. What are we built for? Building bridges. Right. Do you mean metaphorical ones or real no, ones? No, real bridges. My granddad built bridges. Yeah, man. Look at us now. Look at where I Did am. Did he? He was an engineer, a bridge engineer. That's like the most classic kind of engineer, I feel. That's like old school. Yeah, it's old school. That's like what engineering is, isn't it? Yeah. It was and quite... everyone else is like a variation on that. Yeah. Well, he was talking to me about his... He was talking to me about drinking at one point or saying how it used to be back in the fucking day. Um, and him and his colleagues would go and get whiskeys and like go to the pub in, at lunch. Irish. No, not no, not Irish. English side. Yeah, um, used to go and get whiskeys at the pub or whatever. Is this bald cheese granddad? Yes, it's bald cheese granddad. <laughs> <laughs> Was um, getting? He'd say they used to go and get whiskeys at the pub <laughs> and drink and. Ex- <laughs> like you, you are such a liability after literally one fucking drink. He is bald cheese granddad, so yes. <laughs> So he was saying how he would go to the pub and everything and they'd, you know, drinking wouldn't be, he was saying it as shocked as how the culture used to be. But then how it wasn't, uh, most days they'd at least go to the pub or have alcohol and interact in their job at some point. And then I did, and then I was like, don't, didn't you build bridges? You build bridges for trains. Yeah, it's not The loss of life could have been massive. That explains a lot, I feel. About what? Trains. Mm. So with LA, have you, is there any, do you have any sort of, are you gonna? Sit, are there any fucking sites that you want to hit? Is there? Like, it's more like clubs and stuff. It's, it's culture. Like, I it's hit just culture. like I don't a lot think, of driving about. Yes, a lot of driving about. I want to go to Skid Row. To what? Just, I want to. I want to experience Tim Dillon's conception of LA. Yeah. What the the hellscape? The hellscape. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I don't know. I think it's more just like the culture. I want to go to the comedy store. There's yeah. lots of good jazz places there. Um, I think we're seeing some the DJs. Beach. Yes, the beach. Yeah, I kind of forget. It's is there any there. way out of town? Wait, is it east or west? Because when I got onto, it's west, isn't it? Because when I got on the plane to San Francisco, I when you I had thought it was east. Wait, oh, yeah, when I hadn't, what's wrong with you? When I hadn't slept, I hadn't slept a wink, and was because I'd been up all night with Taha in London. Yeah, and then had to get a nine a.m. That was an flight. insane decision. I remember that. It, it, it just happened. Um, it was awful. So I hadn't slept a wink. I looked like a maniac. And I just sat down. And you know when the plane route comes up, I just started laughing to myself. And everyone was kind of looking at me. I was like, I had no idea we were going that far away. Because <laughs> I didn't realize San Francisco was on the West Coast. It yeah. just made me laugh how far into America it was. It was amazing that you made it. Yeah. It was. I didn't sleep for something like 70 hours. Because I didn't sleep 70. on the... I didn't sleep on the... Maybe that's ridiculous. That's too... Well, I slept the night before... <laughs> So there was 24 hours that I hadn't slept when I got on the plane. And then I didn't sleep on the plane, which was 11 hours. You didn't sleep at all on the plane? No, I couldn't. I was in the middle. Because? <laughs> I was still a bit jacked. Because you're in cocaine? Yeah, a little bit. But I'm not much. I was still on the after effects of it. But then, and then there was an 11 hour flight. Yeah. And then I didn't, I wanted to stay up so I didn't get jet lagged. Um, so then there was probably another 10 hours. It was yeah. very, it was odd. Yeah. And when you woke up with no sleep, because you sleep like 20 minutes or did you not when? sleep at all? I think I might've had 20 minutes like drifted. And did you consider not going? Oh, oh no, not uh, before. Yeah. No, I didn't sleep at all before. I, no, I, I, just I went sat straight. and fucking Taha, I was in his LSE um, block of flats yeah. 
And we got back when I had to leave. I had an hour before I had to leave. And then he, sh- he was, I was st- sleeping in his friend's room, which I had, I had no idea of the halls, no idea about anything. Mm. And then I got into, I got into bed and was obviously, I was like, I'm never going to sleep. I'm just going to have to wait here for an hour. I did consider not going. Um, and then I was, I messaged, I was like, I really need, I really need a wee. Where's your, where's the toilet? And he said, oh, it's this room number. I then like went, went out, opened the, ro- I went to that door, opened it and it was just someone, someone asleep in there. I went back and I was like, and Taha just played a prank on me. I was like, is this the time to play a prank on someone? <laughs> Where's the fucking toilet? I was livid. It was horrible. It's a good prank. It's yeah, a good prank. and then I got back in the room and that was when I was like, am I actually going to be able to do this? Yeah. I'm dead. You did, you pulled it off. Um, did you recover during the trip or did he never truly recover? I recovered during the trip, yeah. but it was like, it was when we were, at, it was when we were at uni and I was going out visiting a friend who was at yeah. uni. So it was like, it was still you, that yeah. those kind of rules. Sure, but and the stamina. No, the fir- and I fell asleep on the tube from Stansted to Liverpool Street or whatever it was, or Heathrow to Liverpool Street, um, and then someone had to wake me up because it was the last line. Oh shit! Which is fine though. It won't be as crazy as that time. But we've en- we've entered um, we've entered spooky season. We um, have. I'll how, be spending what are, what are your there. What are your thoughts on Spooktober? Where the uh, fuck has this come from? Do you know what I mean? Where is anyone? Have you ever heard spooky season before used so aggressively throughout everything? Well, I saw the ruminations of it start about three, four years ago with Spooktober came into meme culture, but more in the outer rims. Yeah, but spooky season. Is this this is a new thing? I feel like with the internet and TikTok, there's an Last obsession year, to compartmentalize every single time period. It's hot girl <laughs> summer, and then it's white boy summer, and then it's cuffing season, and now it's spooky season. It's like everything. You're not, has you're to not be. for it though. Isn't it nice to organise time like that? I'm for hot girl summer. Sure. I'm for cuffing season. For chubby boy winter. Yeah, fat boy winter. <laughs> but I'm not a. I don't. I don't care for Halloween. Mm-hmm. Said it. Do you care for Halloween? I don't care for Halloween. I think we both are on the same page with this. I find it actually. I. It's one of those things where I'm happy that people love it. Right. But that's not me. Sure. Um. I've been invited to three Halloween parties all on different dates. Um, yeah. I want to go to one and I don't know how to cancel the other two. Just say you're busy? I guess so. Wow, that was tough. Yeah, I know, but it just feels... Are you going to go... Oh, you're fucking I'm not right. here. Yeah. Thank God. What what a sweet mercy that is. Yeah. Well, I'll be, I'll have to do stuff in LA. They'll t- they take it way more seriously in America. You won't have to. They, yeah. You, do, will people be forcing you? You don't know <laughs> anyone in LA. Oh, well, I do. Yeah. She's got friends in LA. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's the whole thing. Okay. Well, then you might be roped into... I will. I think I'm going to have to get a costume. Yeah. Oh, I'm gosh. I'm get, I'm getting a costume. What are you going to get? So I'm going with BB. You're going to get, you're going to dress as BB. I'm going to dress as BB. We're going to dress as each other. That's, that would be so lame. (laughs) (laughs) We're dressing. I, I'm so lackadaisical with, but this is a Halloween party where it's really not cool to not take it seriously. Everyone's taking it seriously. So, so I, I'm going, I'm going as Ron Burgundy. Hmm. Red corduroy suit. Yeah. Brown. Have you got a red corduroy suit? No, I'm going to buy one. Really? It's on Monday. Sounds quite expensive. I, I thought I might as well buy something that I can use again. Yeah. Do you have your red cord suit here? No. No. That's long gone. It's disappeared. Yeah. No into idea. the ether. I think so. It was a banger though. Uh, and then she'll go as Veronica Corningstone. Right. But then everyone. Yeah. Yeah. You get. You're gonna get like mics. It's just anything that's. I feel very uncomfortable. You got a stash, don't you? I else? feel very uncomfortable in a costume. <clears throat> oh, because I fucking. Do you, I did I tell you, I didn't tell you about me hosting Oktoberfest. No, we haven't. No, we haven't sus- discussed that. So it was a very confusing story. To yeah, read. I know it was because it's even more confusing when I see you leave the house <laughs> and then an hour later I look at your story and you're in a lederhosen. <laughs> <laughs> so on just a comedy lads group chat, the owner of the Vauxhall Comedy Club, Mooch, um, he just posted, he, "I'm busy." Anyone want to host so he was meant Oktoberfest to host from one thirty to four thirty, three hundred quid, and I'm like, God, three hundred quid for three hours work. That's the, not bad. Numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. hundred quid an hour. That how, is, how, how many hours was it? Three hours. It turned out to be two hours. Okay, so so it really was good money. Quids up. But I wasn't the guy to do it. But I took it anyway because I wanted the money. 
Yeah. I don't think I could, you know. And that I isn't got the, one for the really needed to smash the performance. Sure. And I, I got there and it's Vauxhall Comedy Club. I love Vauxhall Comedy Club. Arguably my home club. It's been debated for many, many years. By historians. But historians have debated it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the people who go there are, are trash, are garbage. Um, so well, we, we did a podcast there. Yes. And that was the first time I didn't realise the it, fact it's that an it insane, is literally... It's an, ins- uh, it's an insane place. It's, very, it's it, insanely run. Yeah. Everyone there... They're, they're constantly trying to like squeeze as much money out of people as possible. They they always have at least six events going on. That yeah. are, are, and they're sound bleed into all of them. Yeah. So for this Oktoberfest thing, which had like bottomless pints, I was just vaguely hosting. I was, I was replacing <laughs> Dapper Laughs. Oh my God. <laughs> was Dapper Laughs advertised to be there? That was the thing that he told me when I arrived, saying you had to open it by saying Daffer Laughs can't be there for personal reasons. Oh um, my god! So people had come expecting Daffer Laughs. They got, got this you. Um, you and but Elena it actually wasn't that big. Yeah. They were all so fucking trolleyed that yeah. it wasn't that big a what, deal. What does hosting that event? Well, entail? so when Mooch, Mo- it's the only second time they did it, and Mooch did it the first time and said it was really fun. He hosted it. Yeah, yeah. and it's not you're not doing material. Yeah, you're yeah. basically just working a shift at a pub yeah. in a way. But just much more. It was really undignified. Well, I how ha- did you open? I did. I I kind of set did the s- scene. Set the full scene. I'm interested. So it's you know how what's a comedy club set up yeah, where it's this like big long. open stretch. Yeah, which it's is like sort a, of like a glorified an giant Ibiza pub alley- garden. Yeah, it's like a glorified alleyway stretched out wide. Astro yeah. turf on the floor. Yeah, big buildings either side. Beer, um, it's quite practical. Yeah, but- very practical. Kind of beer hall, open yeah. air beer hall sort of vibe. The kind of pretty and then in the middle i i'm there there's lots of people who have come dressed in lederhosen so they've bought tickets for oktoberfest and then come they've all come in like a group of six or something dressed yeah. up as if it's this occasion yeah um and then i was asked what i had to do i the kind of the, the only real beats i had to hit yeah. were organizing two competitions a, a stein drinking competition and a sausage eating competition good lord and the main bit body of the work. And so when I was up, body I, was, of the work. I was hosting <laughs> and I had a Roman mic, roaming mic, just talking to groups. Right. Most of it was How writing much? down team names, writing yeah. out who was nominated to do these tasks and trying to G everyone up. It was up. a bit like hosting a sports day. Yes. It, yeah. And I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, I did a fine job. Yeah. Um, I certainly didn't. How much were they paying attention to you versus like... Well, because what Mooch said was that he would get the team names while speaking with the mic yeah. and it'd be part of the performance right. but that, that fell out the window immediately yeah. I just couldn't no one was caring and yeah, it was just yeah, weird yeah. me having conversations with people individually loudly, loudly and then it no just got really strange so I was just going from these different these different groups trying to the problem is is that I would never do what I was asking them to do but so I had to you, pretend that I was into it them, yeah. yeah and a lot of them who weren't even that interested in it yeah. a lot of time I was like yeah don't, you don't need to do it don't so worry you don't really know the crowd at all though come up with the team name select a champion and then we just how did got, you select a champion they did they would select their, they, they'd send forth their champion and whoever won it got a round of Jaeger bombs wait who, what do you mean I'm confused about how this so I, I'd go from table to table yeah. asking uh, do you guys want to come part of a beer drinking competition but who, who selects the champion they, they do amongst themselves for each group yeah Right, and they, they're the people that take part. Yeah, so they pick right. one so person from each won. group. Yeah, okay. So there's, there was like, I don't know, 15 tables, maybe yeah. 10 of them sent forth a person. Right. And then on the hour, after the Umper band. Sure. So the Umper band would come up, play a bit well, of Well, naturally, it's not, a, it's not October Festival. <laughs> no, exactly. An Umper band who looked utterly miserable. And I just, there, there was a lot of us working there who were just looking at each other like, yeah, quick cash. You yeah, know, yeah. Was, we were all doing it. But I did feel very dirty. I was in the later who's, and I kept my jeans on. Um, was that frowned upon one person made a comment about it um, I did I, I basically asked Mooch if it was alright and he saw the look in my eyes and he said yeah you can keep your jeans on because I just I did feel it was too degrading well you don't like your legs in the best of scenarios yeah it just felt it was you know in like extras when Andy Millman feels like he's selling out you know the Richard Race's <laughs> yeah, character yeah yeah it was the closest it kind of like visually felt to that so yeah. keeping the jeans on yeah. was your was my small rebellion. my small thing right. of like yeah. it, if i if i get my knees out right then you have sold out for 300 pounds yeah, and i just looked ridiculous and i was taking and i was just <laughs> trying to get through it as fast as possible the beer drinking competition fine whoever can drink the pint the fastest wins a round of drinks 
whatever, fine. The sausage eating competition was quite a horrific. Uh, mm. Were they in bun- Were they in buns or was it just pure sausage? I I had so little information about it. They kept asking how many sausages, and I just said, "Oh, it'll just be one big sausage." I think uh, it was five big sausages. Surely it can't be one. No, exactly. That's what, what I should have yeah. thought of. And then I had to... A lot of people came to the stage and didn't realise they were eating five, the, five sausages. So, someone who, so you were signing people up for who, who were willing to have one sausage. And then everyone was drunk five. and they'd probably already eaten. So the idea of pummeling just for a round of Jägermoms. But I, I guess it was a good spectacle. How long did it take them to eat the five sausages? Was it horribly long? No, because it's whoever finishes first. Yeah, I know. Give up. But still, no, they no, just couldn't there, get through it. Well, there it took him like 10 guy, minutes. There was a guy who won both the beer and uh, sausage eating competition. Fair play. Uh, he was an athlete. Um, so he just kind of finished it quite quick. But then there was just this horrible mess of everyone who'd spat out all their sausages because oh, they'd, they'd finished the they don't finish the sausages. I do not get those events. So it was pretty hellish. And I got out. Uh, ASAP, but you know, through it's like code. um, those events are a bit Dapper, like. I can't believe Dapper last <laughs> that. That's so I think fun. he would have. <laughs> he would have com- done great. He would have commanded the crowd. He would have been great. Yeah, he would have been perfect. Make complete sense. Those kind of events, it's like um, bingo lingo or like drunk bingo. Exactly. Because I used to have, I was bartending. Oh fuck yeah, of course. And they were occasionally I'd pop in just to have a have a look see. It was fucking hell in there. Yeah, absolutely. Just dog shit. I don't just constantly. I don't get it at all. I don't understand it. it I feel. And this, this, what I feel it is, is for people that don't have good enough friends to go and talk to. Sure. They have to go in a room. I get people enjoy this. So I, I'm sure I'm going to upset some people because they actually can't do, do this. But I, why, maybe comment why it's desirable. Mm-hmm. It just seems like there's just, it's the stickiest place I've yeah. ever been in. Yeah. And I've been in some sticky places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And walking sticky through situations. that hellscape and it's just bingo at the end of the day. But just yeah, the the there's a, there's a man in drag. There's two men in drag on the stage, just dancing about, and it's just it feels like the it's literally the sticky underbarrel of entertainment. Yeah, and I just don't I don't get the appeal. And that's how it felt. Um, and so I was just happy that uh, nobody really saw me do it, but it did really fit. It felt real like grunt work. Um, yeah, but I just I just getting dressed up. I don't feel. I just don't feel some people you can just see they can because the key thing when you're dressed up is you kind of you can own it you can own it very easily and I can't own it no can you own it is you're dressed up no I feel inherently it's embarrassing it depends yeah no I I, but I think we've done well to avoid anything (laughs) major the best thing about COVID was not, not having to do any costume parties yeah because I really and people love it. Some people absolutely love it. A lot of people do. I think it's I can't stand it. It's similar to it's a similar if you host a costume party, it's a similar thing to knocking on the door as a charity. Mm. You don't give someone a choice. And no. what I hate about it yeah. is that often it means that I have to spend money and buy something and look for something and get it delivered and go through the admin of sourcing a costume. Yeah. That's the annoying thing about it. We did Batman as Bane go on holiday. That was an iconic outfit. It was iconic, and that was incredibly last minute, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. So we ha- we've had quite a lot of um, we did low um, effort Wallace and Gromit. We did Wallace and Gromit. We just got, had quite a few low effort um, Wallace costume. and Gromit. There was some effort. We got yeah. the costume. That was a young, younger us. That yeah. We, we, we really must have been we like fourteen. We yeah. Yeah. Um, but Batman and Bane go on holiday. Um, was just a Bane and Batman. Yes. Was just a Batman and Bane mask. Um, and then we shirts, just wore Hawaiian shirts. shorts. Batman and Bane on holiday. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's good. It's a I bit had funny. to do one, mate. The last one I had to do, it was, it was a heaven, heavenly theme. Yeah. Um, so Adam went as. Adam went as he he was dressed as Bill Gates, but had pearls around his neck. So he was the pearly Gates. Yeah. That's not bad. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and then I for some. <laughs> For some reason, I dressed as a tennis player. I'm going to have to remember why. Pete Sampras. Pete Sampras sent Peter. <laughs> sure. Every, and it wasn't because it was that quite, a, it was the fear. So it was a very, there was lots of like f- cool, coolly dressed people like sure. taking, everyone took it seriously. And I was just the one, this weirdo in the tennis outfit. And Adam was the weirdo in this like sweater vest and yeah. chinos with yeah. pearls on. Yeah. Um, and it, and then I actually um, got too drunk and fell asleep. And Mr. DJ set was supposed to do. Incredible. Iconic. A pretty iconic <laughs> performance for me, actually. Yeah. 
So in LA, do you think you might have to source a costume while out there? I bloody, bloody hope not. But I think if I had to guess, it, it'll be a yes. Yeah. What am I going to do? What should we do? What should I do? Will you do a couple's costume? Uh, mate, probably. Uh, I stand, I generally stand against that. Yeah. I like friends' costumes. Yeah. Me and Adam actually I have a like plan. I costumes. I, I don't, find it so embarrassing. And you're doing it. Has well, BB been... You have to. Has BB pushed this? It's you don't a, have to. You do. Why? It's... This is... Uh, oh, you don't... No, we're not that old yet. No, but this is... Um, this is... I've got... In, it, but through BB, mm. it's Jonathan Ross's Halloween party. Yeah. It's that, oh, is that one? That insane one where everyone's going to be going to the nines. Fuck. So you have to take it sincerely. I wanted to go to that one. So. Right. Yeah, you got to dress up for that. But you don't know, but you can do it sincerely without doing it as a couple. It's not, I, th- I, I don't know. You need, no, I think it's easy for you and it's helpful to have a, a teammate in this. It's a teammate. And um, she can do most of the sourcing out of things. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but you I bring do the moustache. I do find the idea of it quite, you know, smug inherently. Like we're together. Yeah. So I we're d- dressed as a, something that goes together. <laughs> yeah. It is a bit dead, it's isn't it? Bit. It's very dead. So hopefully I don't have to do that. But. Then there is a strength in that, yeah. Because you can just go well. I she's wanted to go also- with Harold and Maud. Do you know that? That. No. that- when you, who, what is it? It's like a really strange, like w- weird film from the seventies yeah. about this relationship between an eighteen-year-old boy and a seventy-year-old woman. Well, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely should have done that. I like that a lot. <laughs> But I guess you've got oh right that really the the destination really changes the the yeah, game here exactly it's not about me Are you sure you want to go as Ron Burgundy what do you think I should make more of a uh, yeah more of a splash yeah what could I do that would be more go, as dumb, I, go I as dumb and Dharma yeah but Bibi has to be sexy because that's Dharma. part of the fun for <clears throat> it's kind of hot for a woman yeah female Dharma yeah no I'd be Dharma. <laughs> you can't dumb. be sexy dumb. <laughs> you, can't. you can't be sexy dumb. You can be sexy dharma. <laughs> yeah, I could be sexy dharma. She could bring round a fridge with her for the whole time, implying that all the body parts are in there. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember at the point at Halloween is the, the girls get to dress up and be sexy? Yes, we've all heard that mean girls quote on fucking exactly. repeat on TikTok. Exactly. But do they have to in a re- Yeah, well in yeah. a relationship. Well they want to. P wants to. Yeah, fair enough. Some people don't, yeah, but she fair. does. Because I do yeah, that's fair. You do what you hacking want, ladies. Um, I also do find it funny when girls dress like really dumb on Halloween. Yeah, it's great. Like when they, it is funny when they're out there. I always gravitate towards the girls that are out there with like a SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah if they've exactly. got like a cardboard cut out with SpongeBob, I find that quite funny. Yes, but funny maybe is not what they're after. Why well, is she looking to bang? She's looking to bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what big J Ross? So, do you have any other suggestions for you and BB? Does it have to be? Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Anything better than that's why I just it's think it was bad. pretty low effort. Yeah, I guess it's quite easy, and I think I like the idea of you can reuse the suit. Yeah, that's, that's the I mean. worst thing. If I can, because I can either get a cheap suit for like thirty-five quid, or I could maybe get a half decent one for eighty quid. I called one vintage or something. Yeah, and then I could just use that for. Yeah, stuff. it's handy to have a suit in. A it always burgundy is. suit. Um, um, I still, I think I maintain, and there'll people will be rich there. You know, it's gonna be rich. They're people. gonna go for some shit, but yeah, but that's why you need to. And there's gonna be a lot of money funny. dropped on the party. Yeah. What do you mean go funny? F- if there's any like, <laughs> <it'd> be funny. <laughs> but I'll, I won't know many people there. Right. I'll be arguably the very near the bottom is the least famous person there if not the least like yeah like literally bottom yeah, yeah bottom yeah. i'll be there with a couple of other people who are the plus one who's reckon this is the most- what's the funniest ways last year alfonso cuaron went well, that's a bit silly isn't yeah it? louis theroux went to okay. take her with tt when pick one of them that goes them go i don't know if they're going goes jonathan ross <laughs> That's how to make a fucking splash. <laughs> yeah. You'll go from the least but to the I most. I just don't know if I want to make a splash because no, really, I don't enjoy do making a splash. No way. Because there is never. something funny. And if we were going together, we could go as um, we could go as a, a giant wall. <laughs> like simultaneously. What, you mean proper joint costume? Yeah, but like it's yeah. a wall. We're a brick wall. Yeah, yeah wall. but like we're stuck together. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Because <laughs> I think like, it's, the, it's the awkward turns. And then, because, yeah. It's being, then it's the, being stuck together the yeah, whole night. I would, that would be, I'd definitely do that. And because that's, that's there's, a there's, good making a splash. Because you'd yeah. almost, it's almost like a performance. The night is almost like a sketch in itself. 
they have this insane horror maze that he does every year. John, Going through that is personally, a, Jonathan Ross <laughs> does all the characters. He's just, <laughs> out there with a chainsaw at the end. Um, and so, look, that's going to be an experience that'll be fun in its own weird way, stressful and fun. But then I've been the other two. I just like, do I just take the weekend off Halloween because I've got one on Monday? Yeah, you only want one. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't fathom going to more than one costume yeah. party because there's Michael's. Yeah, is that a costume party? Well, it's Halloween. Eh, it might not be. It probably is. Knowing him, he's a yeah. bit of a nerd. He loves that shit. Yeah. So I need to message him. Well, every I think everyone's going to go as Jeffrey Dahmer this year. I think that's going to be the big trend. Yeah. Because they do it. Well, I'll just go. Yeah, that that can just be my copy and paste one if I if I need to. I'll just... I don't know. Don't go as Jeffrey Dahmer. That shows no originality. Yeah, but I don't. No, no, not not to Jonathan Ross's. Oh, to the other one. Yeah. To, who yeah, gives a fuck? yeah. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, just I guess means I can so. wear normal clothes and be. Well, let's go as a one man wall. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I'm not a fan of. Um... What the fuck am I going to go as? Well, you got some options because you look. You can look like things. Justin Trudeau in blackface. <laughs> <laughs> If you went, if your costume, because because you know obviously you can't because it's blackface, but the actual if you think Damn. of annoyingly because the optics are too bad. What? Well, yeah, because it's like no, no, I'm not doing blackface. I'm doing Justin Trudeau blackface, which is satirically brilliant. Brilliant, yeah, absolutely. Fuck, brilliant. that would be amazing. <laughs> I could be Justin Trudeau in blackface. You going to Jonathan Ross's Halloween party? It's Justin Trudeau with the and you're trying to explain to everyone. No, 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 no it's no. not black. I'm, I'm not, not doing Aladdin. I'm not Aladdin. <laughs> I'm Justin Trudeau. Which annoyingly... <laughs> It'd be the perfect isn't... Halloween costume yeah. for you. Because well, you look like Trudeau. Well, you that... look like Zach Braff. Zach Braff. I could do scrubs. But I don't yeah, look wear enough. scrubs. Miles Teller. I could do... Oh, Top Gun's a good one. But... Yeah, but that's a bit sexy and exactly. that's taking yourself a bit too... Boys can't go sexy. Yeah, well, some they boys can. can yeah, but they're, but they're, they're knobheads. <laughs> Absolutely. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're fucking knobheads. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, look like, I don't look like Miles Teller in Top Gun. I look like Miles Teller in Whiplash. When he wasn't Jat, it just drums. Doesn't doesn't really translate, no, does it? Yeah. It has to be a costume. That's why. What about Zach Braff and Scrubs is still pretty good. Well, I maintain, and you, this is probably wrong. Oh, you should go as the Finnish Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> if you're saying you look so much, is it the Finnish Prime Minister? Yeah. No, I think it De was the it's Latvian. Latvian. Was it Prime Latvia? Minister. Yeah, yeah. Wait, you, you carry weird. on. Yeah, Latvian Prime Minister. I'm not going to carry on. You were saying something. Yeah, but uh, you you actually you can't multitask. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but it's weird because if because I do really look like it, and if it is Latvia, I used to have this weird tick at school. Do you yeah, remember? you would just I'd say, say Latvia, Latvia, Pete, and fish, fish. It's very strange. You still got ticks now though. Poop. <laughs> they changed. There's like a cyclical nature to them. Finland. Well, maybe it is Finland, but she's Denmark. Did you try Latvia? Because it is so funny. No, it's not Finland. It would, she's an absolute piece, the Finnish Prime Minister. Right. Um, there we go, Danish. Yeah, Denmark. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is very funny. You need her a bit less makeup on, a bit less eyeshadow. Yeah, it is. On. Whose comment was it? it was it a comment on the pod or was it a comment on a TikTok? <laughs> it is bang on. It is really funny. If you could just wear a female like pantsuit. Yeah, it's, it's never going to translate. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It is there, isn't it? She's just got the slight droop of the eyes. Yeah, it's just it's all, it's all there. Um, God, it's absolutely spot I on. I still maintain that so I funny. I'm pretty sure I, I this was many many years ago many I, moons ago when I was I was just starting to get well it was actually it was before Wallace and Gromit yeah, it was definitely before Wallace and Gromit so before your but sexual was, awakening before yes before <laughs> I realised I could only come whilst wearing a Gromit outfit um, <laughs> but I realised that I was fed up of um, fancy dress and it was really last minute and I was pissed off I remember going into Brighton and I was like what the fuck am I going to get I was like, I'm going to do it. I went to TK Maxx and bought a sheet and went as a ghost. And I, I maintain that I was one of the first people to do this. Like actually go as a ghost, as in two eyes, eye holes cut out. It's a classic, but I don't think it's really been seen. I imagine in the seven, it, it, it was seen where the stereotype right. came from. I think from. I might just be talking about our friendship group. Sure, then, I guess. yeah, yeah. It was fun because there was a long period. I could hear murmurings of, do you know who the ghost actually is? And I managed to like not take it off for ages and just like dance without saying anything. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then there was a reveal and everyone was disappointed. Disappointed? It was a joke. No, they weren't. They were, they were over the moon. They were over the fucking moon. Uh, thanks very much for listening, guys. We're going to move on over to the Patreon now. Um, Andrew will be away. Hopefully, we'll do an episode from LA. Yes, if I not, think it's doable. Not, I'll get a guest on. Um, see you guys next week.